I got a small confession to make, both to yourself and to the audience. I've been holding on to this story since we got to speak. So I had uh, Carl Benjamin, Saga of a Card, on the show a few months ago, uh, and it was slap bang as Chaz was happening. So we're talking peak race tensions, right? And I've spoken to Carl before. We got on really well. Episodes are great. But for some reason, I had this ambient anxiety throughout the day leading up to it. And I started talking to him and I was really nervous. I don't usually get nervous, especially when speaking to guests for a second time. So it's just a threat. Oh, how are you? How's this, that, and the other? Sure. And um, I found myself being super, super, it <coughs> felt like I was treading on eggshells as I'm talking to him. And then upon listening back, even some of the things that I said I didn't agree with, I didn't agree with myself. And What, what thought, sort of things? So yeah, for, sorry, no, go on. For, for instance, um, we were talking about should the Faulty Towers episode be taken down, what's happening with Little Britain. Variety released a, a list of 10 problematic movies which need warnings under discussion before yeah. and after watching. And I put this stuff forward to Carl and he gave his thoughts. And I just, after that was done, I, I said th- pushed the rhetoric of my compassion too far i was saying basically i don't think that anyone should be offended which isn't true because in order to communicate you have to risk being offensive that's the way it sure. works another jordan petersonism so anyway what, what i found was that i had somehow managed to and the listeners may be able to uh, f- sense this within their own lives i'd become so ignorant to where the goalposts were that i wasn't i didn't even know what sport i was playing anymore and I feel like this is the end goal, which mm. a lot of the um, smarter people who are using uh, just justice movements to further a particular agenda mm. are hoping to achieve, to move yes. the goalposts so fast that you don't know what's right, what's wrong, well, what's anything else. And I, I was super nervous. And that, yeah, yeah. that, you're, that you're impacted completely me personally. Right. You're completely right. And he, 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 here are a couple examples of that. Um, Tony Abbott former Australian Prime Minister, uh, was appointed by the UK government as a trade advisor the last week. In the days leading up to his appointment, various people led by a number of left-wing broadcasters and newspapers claimed that Tony Abbott is a, you can do it, homophobe, misogynist, granny killer. Uh, they did actually do that, weird. And uh, uh, global warming denier. Bingo, and that's the that's the big four, isn't it? Bingo. The, well, no, the big the biggest one, the fifth one, they actually weren't quite brave enough to do, which was to accuse him of racism. But they accuse him of all the other stuff. And uh, he's none of those things, by the way. He's none of those things. Uh, he's a terrific, terrific guy and a terrific public servant and the former prime minister of Australia, for goodness sake. Um, so anyway, but the point is, is that, is that the, day, the day before the appointment, the day of the appointment and the day after it, the Guardian had on the front page both days, the government appoints misogynist advisor. Okay. As if that's proven. Okay. It's proven. I mean, they put it in quotes, scare quotes, just to make sure they were legally a bit on better t- terrain. But that was what they said. Now, if I was a young woman or a young man growing up with an ordinary level of incuriosity, I would look at that or might look at that and think, that's awful. I mean, that's awful. The British government's deliberately appointing someone who who hates women. Now, as it happens, the the longer you go on in life, the more you, you, you get a sense of things, and the more you realize what's bullshit in The Guardian and what's real life. But it is easy to see how somebody can be given a wrong view of an entire society once you imbibe little things like that. Now, that's an easy one. Let me give you a harder one. The killing of George Floyd. Um, we are in a very perilous position on this, all of us, because I don't know how much time you've spent in the US. I've Have spent it. a bit of, uh, okay, so like me. They have racial problems that we don't have here, I would submit. Every country has racial problems. There's a, pe- a peculiar and particular one that has existed in America throughout history. You could also argue that in the most militarized country in the world, the most militarized law enforcement, it has a likelihood of fatal encounters with the public that is higher than, say, in Britain, where most of the time the police just spend the time running away from protesters. Um, and um, uh, But the point is, is that if you didn't know America that well, I'm giving here the the 
the nicest, best analysis of something that's going on at the moment that I can do. If you didn't know America very well, you didn't know very many Americans, and you read that this white cop had been allowed to kill a black man on camera for eight minutes, and that that was okay, is it what? And that this happened a lot, you would join Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. You would want to join something that said that's not on, that's not right. And the problem is that there are these moments. By the way, Black Lives Matter was just primed for a George Floyd-like event. And, um, and and lots of reasons to do with lockdown. I think the sort of the world was in a way. But what I think happens in those moments is it's very hard for people to get a correct sense of exactly what is going on. So maybe the police in America do kill black people with impunity is a thought that crosses your mind. Maybe America is a racist state. Maybe the British police are like that. Maybe Britain's like that. Maybe we're all racist. Maybe there's such a thing as white supremacy and it's everywhere and so on and so on. And, so on. and it all starts from that first inaccurate estimation of what's going on. So the killer of George Floyd is in custody, awaiting trial on charge of murder. He literally has no defenders in the public sphere. He has a lawyer, but nobody says, I think he did great. So what is this utilization of this one appalling incident and it's widening out, not just to encompass, say, all police in the Minnesota area or all police in that state, all police in America, every white person, every white person on the planet. No, no, you don't get to do that. No way. But in that moment, you see certain very, very bad actors advancing because they feel they've got an advantage. And that is the moment when people become worried because it's hard to interpret exactly what the situation is. And bad actors deliberately pump lies into the system. They say, yes, you can do this in America because black lives aren't worth anything. There was a very moving press conference with some of the police in New York, but a police chief was just standing with his colleagues saying, people are getting away with saying things. Like uh, one activist said, I don't even know if we don't know if we're black, if our children will return from school or whether they'll just be shot by the police. And this policeman was saying, that isn't the case in America. Mental, yeah. It's not the case. But again, if you don't know the country very well, or if you do and you have a certain understanding of it or a misunderstanding of it, or if you're a long way away, it's possible to imbibe those ideas. And so that's why I say that one of the deranging things in our time is that a very significant number of people, particularly young people, have been given or have given themselves an erroneous interpretation of the society they're in. And that's how you end up with the lunatic, you know, writing a book about the in defense of looting. And that's how you end up with people on the streets of Portland running around looking for Nazis and not being able to find them and so smashing in some old woman's face. You know, that's, that's how you get there. And reasonable people of any political direction just have to be able to say no we're not going along you know you, you what it, it is actually it's like the roman legion thing that the people in portland sort of tried to do they use terrible and very freakish events to push forward and behind them is a whole legion of hell that is the purpose that is what BLM and others have been doing. And it has to be said by people of every background, that is not on. You should not be able to make defamatory claims, sweeping claims about whole races of people and whole societies in this manner. And at the moment, certainly in the weeks immediately after that, it was very, very difficult to say that. It's becoming easier. But I wish it's a classic example of I wish we weren't stopped from having that discussion. And we're only stopped from having it because dishonest actors say if you add any nuance to to it, then you are basically on the side of the guy who killed George Floyd. <laughs>